Well, hi there. I'm here today with what I have only learned today is sometimes called the slender, prehensile-tailed New Caledonian gecko, uh, but what I've always known as a Sara. You might not be familiar with the Saras. Uh, geckos that you've more likely heard of are going to be other New Caledonian geckos, especially the crested geckos and the gargoyle geckos. We've got videos on both of those. Uh, some other really common New Caledonian geckos, or relatively common, are, are like the Chewies and the Lichianus gecko. Uh, we have actually an entire playlist for just New Caledonian geckos because New Caledonia seems to have the greatest pet geckos on the planet. The crested gecko and the gargoyle gecko were both on our very first video, five of the best pet reptiles for beginners, because they're amazing. And they're amazing not just for beginners, they're really amazing for anybody who has an interest in keeping reptiles. They're spectacular pets. They're spectacular because, well, on the one hand, they're really good for handling, which a lot of geckos are not. And at the same time, they have care that is really, really easy. Easier than almost any other reptile you would keep. They're awesome. But because they're so awesome, they have become extremely popular. And the truth is, they might just be too common for you. Or you might already have crested geckos and gargoyle geckos and maybe some of the other New Caledonian geckos and just wonder, what other New Caledonian geckos are out there? In our video, Rad Facts About Crested Geckos, we told you that the genus, which includes crested geckos, Corylophus, has actually three different species in it. And that one of those species is basically uh, um, almost indistinguishable from the crested gecko, and that there was this species, Corylophus saracenorum, or as I've always known them, Saras. And I think in many ways, this might be the coolest one of them all. If you've seen our video about the Crestahua, which I named, but it's a hybrid gecko between a crested gecko and a chewy, um, a lot of the New Caledonian geckos are close enough relatives to one another that they're able to produce hybrid offspring. The, the Saras are actually the closest relatives, at least among the commonly available New Caledonian geckos that we can get. They are the closest relatives to the crested geckos. So they can almost certainly crossbreed with crested geckos, with gargoyle geckos, probably with chewies, and maybe with other New Caledonian geckos as well. If you haven't seen that video, you should check it out. We'll have a link right there. I think these guys are so cool looking. Obviously, they're very close relatives to the crested geckos, and so in a lot of ways, they look like crested geckos. They've definitely got a very crested gecko face. And they've even got slight, slight little eyelashes like the crested geckos do. They don't have the big fringes on the side of their heads, um, but they do have basically the crested gecko body shape. And the colorations, a lot of them are solidly colored, but you also get these that have sort of a V up on their neck and the spots. This actually seems to be one of the more desirable colorations. I, I know personally it's my favorite of the Saras that I've seen. They've got this cool tail, and this one I particularly like. I, I happen to be a fan of the Kansas City Chiefs, and this particular gecko has a really good arrowhead on its tail. So uh, I shall call her henceforth Chief. This shall be Chief. The Sara, which is good because otherwise I was going to name her Littlefoot, not Sarah. That would be too on the nose. So obviously these guys are really similar to a lot of the other New Caledonian geckos, which make stinking awesome pets. But are these guys, the Saras, are they as good of pets as the other New Caledonian geckos? Maybe there's a reason that this is the New Caledonian gecko that most people haven't heard of. And if they are good pets, are they the best pet reptile for you? To help you figure this out, we have broken down the Sara into our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the Saras a score of four out of five. And I'm probably being just a smidge generous there. 
these are a little bit flightier than our, say, crested geckos. But it really kind of depends on the individual. On average, these are probably flightier than crested geckos, but I've definitely got some crested geckos that are flightier than this Sara, for example. Like crested geckos, they're small and a little bit fragile, which means rough handling could be really rough on them. Uh, it'd be very easy for someone who was motivated to do so or just not being careful to really injure this gecko if they wanted to. Of course, why would you want to do that? It's more of a risk for handing them off to children or people who are totally unaccustomed to handling reptiles, especially one that might leap onto their face and scare the pants off of them. When it comes to leaping onto your face, they do that. Uh, basically all the New Caledonian geckos are jumpers uh, and they might leap right onto your face sometimes. You can usually tell when a jump is coming if you're used to handling them because they'll bring both back legs forward and they'll kind of start sizing up the jump and then they'll jump right onto your face or onto your other hand. It's really not that big of a deal if you're expecting it, but if you're not, it can be startling. And these guys, like I said, they're a little bit flightier than are many of the other New Caledonian geckos on average. They also, like actually all of the other New Caledonian geckos, they can drop this tail. And unlike their close relatives, the crested geckos, they do grow it back. So this is actually more like a lot of the other New Caledonian geckos, like gargoyle geckos. That tail might not ever be exactly like the original tail, which would be a bummer because it's got a cool adhesive toe pad at the end and it's pretty darn prehensile, which is why these are often called New Caledonian slender prehensile or whatever geckos, prehensile tailed geckos, because it is a, a, a pretty prehensile tail. And, and so it's a bummer if they lose that. It won't be exactly the same as the original, but they grow back a pretty decent tail. And the thing with the New Caledonian geckos is even their original tail almost looks like it wasn't included and it was added on later. Being an arboreal gecko, they've got those cool adhesive toe pads, not just on the tip of their tail, but on their toes. These allow them to walk up smooth surfaces like glass and leaves and things. And it means that they're also very good at holding onto you. You're basically just a warm tree that moves around some, and they're pretty good at not falling out of trees. This gives them a big advantage over some of the terrestrial geckos like leopard geckos, which are more likely to fall if handled. These guys are more likely to leap out into space, and that's how they would end up getting dropped, not just because they fall off of you. They're definitely not gonna hurt you, at least not very badly. They could bite you. I've actually been bitten by more crested geckos than I have snakes, and uh, sometimes they'll break the skin just a little bit, it's never a serious bite. Uh, I have had one grab me and then shake a little bit, and so I bled just a tiny bit, but that's about as bad as it gets with a bite from a crested gecko or a sara. Saras can be a little bit bigger than crested geckos, but it's pretty negligible. They also, they've got little claws that are inside of sheaths, which is totally awesome. Uh, those claws are not gonna cut you at all. You can feel them, but they're not gonna cut you up or anything, not like some large lizards. Overall, these guys are just very manageable for handling, um, pretty predictable, a little bit flighty, but as geckos go, I mean, this is one of the easiest geckos there is to handle. I'd like to pause for just a moment to tell you guys about something we do on Patreon, which is we've got a little podcast. And a few months ago, we actually released a special podcast that the whole group of us at, at Clint's Reptiles do together. And in that podcast, um, you know, we, we talk about all kinds of topics and stuff. Well, this one, we were all together because we were at a cabin in the mountains. You saw we got stranded there as a group. It was great. But Leisha and I actually shared some really exciting news with the other members of our crew. And... Uh, it was really exciting and all of those people on Patreon got to be among the first people to know. In fact, we had to say don't release the podcast just yet. We haven't told our families yet. So as soon as our families were told, Patreon was next and it was really exciting news. And so that is just one of many ways that we try to express our gratitude to those of you that support us on Patreon because you guys are a huge reason that this channel has continued to grow and develop uh, and why we've been able to do so many new things and bring you so much more content. So thank you and please check it out. When it comes to care, we give the Sara a score of four out of five. The biggest drawback to them as far as care goes is just that you'll need to miss them daily or near daily and feed them fairly regularly. 
Um, I, I don't keep these personally, though I would like to, but I do keep quite a few crested geckos, and honestly, um, they are the animal that I keep that ties me down the most. Um, except for our dog. You know, the, the truth is you just can't leave them for more than a couple of days without needing somebody to come over and take care of them. And, and that's kind of a bummer. So that's the biggest drawback to their care. Other than that though, it's awesome. Uh, they eat crested gecko diet, which is the greatest thing any animal could eat because it comes to you as a bag of powder and you add a little bit of water to it and you're done. It's marvelous. They will take some insects. In fact, they'll probably grow a little bit faster uh, and maybe a, a, maybe a little bit healthier if they have some insects. So every now and then it's a good idea to get them some insect treats and to dust those with calcium and vitamin supplements. But really that's at your convenience, which that's not the case with very many insect eating reptiles. Most of the time you have to have insects on a regular basis. With these guys, every now and then, get them a few insects, they'll love that. The enclosure that you need for these guys is simultaneously beautiful and relatively simple. We actually did an enclosure build a while back that would be excellent for these guys. I would recommend a larger enclosure than that particular one, and we'll have links to adequately sized enclosures down in the description, so grab that. But everything else is on that video, and that would be a killer enclosure for these geckos. Make sure that whatever enclosure you get, you favor vertical space over horizontal space. Ground space isn't that big of a deal for these guys. Climbing space, that matters. Make sure that they've got a lot of places to climb as well, branches and plants, things like that. Uh, bioactive is a great way to go, and that's what we encourage in our video before, but you can actually build a very simple enclosure for these, also using things like paper towels and artificial plants. Uh, bioactive is just so pretty and, and so low maintenance. They're, they're awesome, I would go that way, but it's totally up to you. Uh, temperature is, I mean, it's important for these guys because they can't handle extreme temperatures. That's kind of a thing with all the New Caledonian geckos. But the nice thing is they do best at sort of the temperatures that humans tend to prefer the most. So unless your house is pretty hot or pretty cool, you might not need any sort of heat source or cooling at all for these guys. Just, you know, what you often call room temperature. Um, that said, if you live in a place where your house gets really hot, that can be very dangerous for them, and we'll talk about that in a moment. You probably will not need any sort of basking light. In fact, that could be very dangerous for them. What you might want to consider, though, is UVB lighting. Arguably, they don't need it because they're nocturnal, but even during the day they're exposed, they're probably getting quite a bit of UVB, and I haven't seen any studies about animals that seem to do much worse exposed to UVB, so I would recommend it while you might be able to get away with not having it. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Sara a score of 3 out of 5. Like we said before, rough handling, that can do them in, right? These are not a huge animal. They're a fairly good sized gecko, but they're not a huge animal. They could easily be squished or otherwise injured during handling. I wouldn't recommend giving them to children, at least not children that are not accustomed to the care required to handle small reptiles. We've actually got a video on that as well, so I don't know if we'll have it here, but it'll at least be down in the description. Humidity is going to be a big deal with these guys. Um, you need to mist them regularly so that they have water droplets to drink, and that's very important. But you also want the enclosure to dry out in between mistings. Uh, if it's just sopping wet in there all the time, they can be susceptible to respiratory infections and other skin and fungal infections. So, you know, keeping your humidity right, that's really important for these guys. Most important, though, is temperature. If you let it get extremely hot, that can kill them. Extremely cold, that can kill them. But there's about a, a 20 degree Fahrenheit range where they do great, and it's sort of the range where humans prefer to be. So, uh, you know, at least for me, I don't put any effort into heating or cooling my crested geckos or my, gar my gargoyle geckos. In fact, a while back, somebody offered to send us a chewy, so maybe someday I'll be like, oh, or my chewy, doesn't affect my chewy either. One other wonderful thing about these guys is, to my knowledge, none of them are being exported from New Caledonia. They're all captive bred. Like a lot of the other New Caledonian geckos, they breed very well in captivity, and that is just a great thing. It means they're gonna come to you without parasites and generally healthy and from a known source. That's really good. If you give them the things they need, you know, if you don't cook them, if you don't drown them or, or uh, you know, not give them something to drink, they should do really, really well for you. 
When it comes to availability, this is where the Sara starts to drop off compared to gargoyle geckos and especially crested geckos. We give them a score of two out of five. And I, frankly, I was being generous here. I would say that the, the crested gecko is by far the most common New Caledonian gecko, followed fairly distantly by gargoyles, and then probably leeches and chewies at similar numbers. I have a much harder time finding Saras. That's why it's actually been this long without us covering them. I've wanted to cover them forever because I love them, but I very rarely see them. I have seen them at expos. They are there, but it's it's rare. It's not every expo I go to. I mean, uh, when we went to the Tinley show, and if you haven't seen our video on Tinley, I show you a lot of cool geckos. I didn't show you a single Sara. I didn't see any. There might have been some there. I didn't see one. This one comes to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, which is an awesome pet store, and I love them. And one of the things about Animal Ark is, I mean, if you watch this channel regularly, you'll notice they carry stuff sometimes that I've never seen in any other pet store ever. And, and so it's like, well, I gotta take advantage of this opportunity. And this was one of those opportunities. This was in a pet store. It's the only time I've ever seen one in a pet store. Generally speaking, you're gonna need to find a breeder directly. And that probably means you find somebody online. I mean, even on Morph Market, I found zero Saras. I went through all their other geckos. I found tons of Chewies and Leechies, zero Saras. They're out there, but they're hard to find. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Sara a score of three out of five. These guys can be found at fairly reasonable prices. Uh, this this white collared morph uh, seems to be the most desirable and most expensive, at least of the commonly available ones. I don't know, there might be some crazy morphs out there that I haven't seen yet. Like I said, I rarely see these at all. So I don't know how much variation you can find, I know there's a lot of variation in how dark they are, and then the exact patterns, there are a few different ones. This seems to be the most expensive ones. I've noticed Sara's seem to range somewhere between about two and $500 in there. That, that puts them as being more expensive than kind of your, your more affordable crested geckos. Uh, you know, right in the range of gargs, maybe a little bit more than gargs, and probably less than Chewies or Lychees. So. That's about where they're gonna be. The enclosure for them isn't super cheap, but it's also pretty darn affordable. It's a reasonable size. You can decorate it affordably. You don't need heat lights. You know, it's not gonna be super expensive, that. You're gonna need substrate and branches. Uh, a spray bottle, I would almost recommend a misting system for them just so you can go a little bit longer. Uh, without having to be maintaining them. Now, crested gecko diet, get a big bag of that in advance. Vitamins and calcium. Like I said before, UVB, not a bad idea at all. Uh, though, don't don't use a basking spot unless you're extremely careful with that temperature because that could actually kill them. And like I said, we'll have links to all these things down in the description, so check that out. Should be everything you'll need to get set up for a Sara. And as a result, of all of these things, we give the Sara an overall score of 3.2 out of 5. These guys are a little bit flightier and a little bit more expensive than some of their other New Caledonian cousins, but in most ways they're just as good of pets and they're just a little bit different. A lot of people have never heard of these before. If what you want is basically a crested gecko that regrows its tail and isn't a crested gecko, then the Sara might be the perfect pet lizard for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Come here, rolling. You see me rolling. Yeah. We filming. I just got back from Australia, Niue, and New Zealand. Expect videos about all of those places. I'm just gonna check who that is. Is it vibrating? It's on Leisha. It's Leisha, not on Leisha. <laughs> Hello, Leisha, you're on Clint's Reptiles. All right, we've had enough of him. Okay, to sleep. but he's so cute. Is it